A few days back, I did a video on Google's web environment integrity. If you've not seen that video, or if not familiarized yourself on the topic, I highly recommend you do so. In this video, I'll be skipping over a lot of those prior details. But the TLDR is a group of Google engineers are proposing effectively generic web DRM, providing websites with a means to lock out users based on their environment. This can mean the browser, this can mean things in the browser, or it could even mean the operating system or a variety of other cases. Now, this can already be done based on user agent string parsing, but the user agent string is really easy to change. This, however, gets you into the realm of running the browser in a virtual machine, and most users are just not going to be doing that. The engineers disagree with this framing and instead frame it as a good thing, as the server needs to be able to trust the environment that the client is running in. Now, I'm not going to tell you what to think. What I will tell you is go and read the proposal yourself and come to your own conclusion. Now, when I made that first video, there were two things I wasn't aware of. Firstly, this thread in the Blink Dev group by Ben Weiser. Ben Weiser is the person who owns the repo for Web Environment Integrity, Intent to Prototype Web Environment Integrity API. This is from May 9th, so shortly after this proposal was first created. Keep in mind that at this point, nobody knew about the proposal. Nobody really discovered it until sometime mid-July. So it makes sense why in May, they had the intent to prototype. So for a while, the discussion was relatively quiet, mainly amongst established Chromium developers, and then the public discovered it. From that point on, there is a lot more discussion being had, and as we've seen from the previous video, the general public isn't exactly a fan of this proposal. The much bigger issue is the second thing. Google has already started forcing web integrity into Chromium despite it being a proposal. With WEI, users can be denied access for using non-approved browsers or hardware. The open internet is officially dead as soon as this is commonly implemented. Showing this photo right here. Now, this Twitter user frames it in a really, really bad way. Now, the actual reality is not good but it is not as bad as the user makes it out to be. This is the commit in question. Most of the changes here are related to the Android web view. Now scrolling down to the specific change being shown, this is from a file called aw web environment integrity test.java. aw presumably meaning Android web view. So this is basically a test file, a test suite to ensure that web environment integrity is working like it should be. Now, this is not a full implementation of web environment integrity. However, you don't just randomly write test suites. You write a test suite because you're in the stage of at least prototyping something. And considering Google, Android makes the most sense as the place to try and do that testing. You have a massive install base and a lot of people who are just using the standard browser. Keep in mind, that commit was being made whilst all of this discussion on the web environment integrity GitHub was happening. Whilst all of these people were saying, hey guys, stop. Like, what are you doing? This is absolutely insane. Also, now that people know that this commit exists, uh, people also realize there is a comment section on commits all the way down here. And there is a lot of people leaving commits on this. So much so that the GitHub is actually kind of lagging and I'm not able to load it properly. But like, there is a giant wall of commits. Probably more people than were ever involved on the main GitHub in the first place. I don't think the Chromium devs have realized that they can actually lock down these comments. So, I guess until they do, uh, you can just keep commenting. And I'm sure people are going to do so. Whilst that may be fun, it's not productive. If Google decides they want to take this past the prototyping stage and actually roll it out to the users, just saying, I don't like this, this is bad, that's not going to do anything. They have a 65% browser market share with Chrome. What I encourage you to do instead is contact your local antitrust agency. I'll be leaving links in the description down below. I'm not going to obviously be able to list out all of them, but I'll list out some major countries and regions, and I really encourage you to go and file an antitrust claim 
and try to get your local government to do something about it. Especially if you're in somewhere like the European Union. Hopefully an organization like that will step up and actually do something. But they won't do something unless you tell them there is a problem. I am not joking here. This is a danger to the future of the web and just commenting about it is not going to change anything. With that being said, browsers outside of Google Chrome have made statements on the situation. Some of those browsers being Chromium-based browsers, the most notable being Brendan Eich, the CEO of Brave. After someone said that Brave is literally just a reskin version of Chromium, they're not going to have a choice about implementing this, Brendan Eich has this to say, We are a fork. Have been all along. The reskin claim is complete nonsense. We won't be shipping WEI support just as we disable or otherwise nullify lots of other junk that Google puts into Chromium. Linking to this GitHub repo where it shows all of the things they changed between Chromium and Brave. In fact, somebody made an issue about the test being done with the earlier commit and they've already made a merge request removing the functionality. However, he does acknowledge this might become a widevine situation where every single platform that needs DRM is going to implement it. So you either implement it as well or users just cannot use your browser to access certain content on the internet. If that does happen, well, they'll at least need to include a toggle for it. But don't let history repeat, shun Chrome. Vivaldi has also made a statement unpacking Google's new dangerous web environment integrity specification and scrolling down to the section on can we just refuse to implement it? Unfortunately, it's not that simple this time. Any browser choosing not to implement this would not be trusted and any website choosing to use this API would therefore reject users from those browsers. Google also has ways to drive adoption by websites themselves. Firstly, they can easily make all their properties depend on these features and not being able to use Google websites is a death sentence for most browsers already. Furthermore, they can mandate the sites that use Google Ads, which is most of the internet that has advertising, use this API as well, which makes sense since the first goal is to prevent fake ad clicks. That would quickly ensure that any browser not supporting the API would be doomed. Instead, they are leaning on EU law to hopefully not allow this to happen. There is an overwhelming likelihood that EU law will not allow a few companies to have a huge amount of power in deciding which browsers are allowed and which are not. There is no doubt that a tester would be under a huge amount of pressure to be as fair as possible. Unfortunately, legislative and judicial machineries tend to be slow and there is no saying how much damage will be done while governments and judges are examining this. Now, other browsers like Edge and Opera have not stated anything on the situation. I don't know what Edge is going to do. I could imagine they don't want to give Google more power, but I could also imagine they would be in a partnership with Google and just work alongside them. So it's unclear what's going to happen there. Now, what about Mozilla Firefox? Well, luckily, they actually do have a statement on this. Someone made an issue on the standards positions repo. Request for position, web environment integrity API. This was done two weeks ago before any of this prototyping stuff even came out. From Brian Grinstead of Mozilla. Mozilla opposes this proposal because it contradicts our principles and visions for the web. Any browser, server, or publisher that implements common standards is automatically part of the web. Mechanisms that attempt to restrict these choices are harmful to the openness of the web ecosystem and are not good for users. Additionally, the use cases listed depend on the ability to detect non-human traffic, which as described, would likely obstruct many existing uses of the web, such as assistive technologies, automatic testing, and archiving and search engine spiders. These depend on tools being able to receive content intended for humans and then transform, test, index, and summarize that content for humans. The safeguards in the proposal, e.g. holdback or randomly failing to produce an attestation, are unlikely to be effective and are inadequate to address these concerns. Detecting fraud and invalid traffic is a challenging problem that we're interested in helping address. However, this proposal does not explain how it will make practical progress on the listed use cases, and there are clear downsides to adopting it. Also from Tantec, a separate Mozilla employee, since this is a proposal in a personal GitHub repo and not standard track work nor in any open incubation group, there is no need for a dashboard entry. 
closing accordingly. Position negative. Let's just not talk about it. As for Safari, now that is a really interesting one because this kind of slipped under my radar. Private access tokens, eliminating captures on iPhones and Macs with open standards. This is Apple's own attestation system. This happened an entire year ago and nobody noticed. Apple is kind of like Nintendo. They do their thing, we do our thing, we don't interact with each other, and that's pretty much that. But I know that Apple obviously doesn't really like Google, so I could see them opposing it just to go against Google, but considering they have their own attestation system, like with Microsoft, if they could come up with some sort of partnership, I could see them going along with it perfectly fine. While it would be nice if all of this could be dealt with at the browser level, that's not reasonably possible. Unless you have some way to get all of these people to swap from Chrome, Chrome has a 65% market share. Now, it's not the 90% that Internet Explorer once had, but 65% is enough to have a giant sway on the internet. Let alone the fact that Google also has their ad system, and I don't even want to know what number that bumps it up to. Please, I said it earlier and I'll say it again, contact your local antitrust agency and get your government to do something about it. If that doesn't happen, the only thing I can really hope for is this is just one of the many, many services that is killed by Google. A list that is so crazy that it even has things that haven't happened yet because they're killing things so often that there's multiple things expiring in the future. And no, going to Gopher is not a solution. I know there is like five people out there that are really big fans of Gopher, but that's not going to happen. Regular people are never going to leave the internet in the state that it's currently in. If it does happen, it is going to be a gradual change over time. You're not gonna have people drop everything they're doing just because of this. Most people are not even gonna realize that anything is happening. This is where you as the techie person need to go and do something. One thing I wanna make very clear is I've seen some people putting together lists of the engineers working on this proposal or working on the commits to implement this and then threatening developers' lives. This is not productive and I do not support this happening. If I see this happening in my community, I'm going to ban you and I'm going to encourage every single other person I know to ban you as well. Threatening them is just going to make these engineers more vindicated in what they're doing. With that, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you think the web environment integrity is a good thing? Do you think it's a bad thing? Have you sent an antitrust claim to your local regulatory body? I would love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one over these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon subscribe. <laughs> check out the Patreon subscribe silly barrier pay linked in the description down below. That's gonna be it for me, and your integrity has expired. Anytime,